housing. Uh, and the, the argument comes up with, you know, is it low incomes or affordable? It's affordable because HUD requires a certain percentage of the person's income. Uh, I saw something just the other day on this. If you're, if you're paying 60% of your income in rent, you are over rent burdened. The, uh, the HUD standard is that if you live in HUD housing, you do not pay more than 30% of your income, and HUD subsidizes the rest. That's what it, low income housing is. Um, so we can certainly use some more of that because uh, we have got folks living at Moody who can't afford regular housing. They are on food stamps. So we have, you know, we need uh, affordable housing all over the county. Mayor, Mayor, one of the programs that we had recently that becomes more popular is um, this low income housing tax credit program. Mm -hmm. um, we used to have one developer and kind of one application, and now, you know, this year we're probably going to have up to three in our own community. And when you have you know, six applications for the entire state, but three within our own community. I mean, I think there's something to that, that they seem to think that we are a competitive place to build these types of developments. So I think that's a good thing, because you have a public-private partnership trying to attack that problem. Mm -hmm. But we used to have one developer, now we're potentially going to have three. Um, Matt and I met with someone coming out of Florida the other day right. who was targeting our community to put in an application. So people are are seeking us to, it seems like, be competitive. And I, I, you know, part of that's a good thing because thank you for your investment and your partnership. Part of that is a bad thing because somehow they're recognizing some need and the state is saying, we want to invest and try to address this problem in your community. So mm -hmm. it's a double-edged sword, but I've not seen this much <coughs> interest in that program in years. Nine, nine years. I've not, I've not seen this much interest in the private sector of, of trying to build these types of developments. Jason, do we make any requirement of them that their tax thing that they get back has to be invested in Georgia? I remember years ago we had a, we had some low-income housing here. Mm -hmm. that was built. It was not taken care of. The company was out of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So their tax credits went to North Carolina. Not a nickel of that was invested in Georgia other than building the houses. And then they left and really didn't take good care of the facilities. It turned out they weren't built well. Does the county require anything saying it has to be a local investment, it has mm -hmm. to be a local company? so that that money stays in our community, maybe making sure we have minority groups that are involved in building it and so forth? Matt, well, the construction of it is one thing, but as far as the tax credits themselves, I don't know if DCA has rules for that. They really ought to. They really ought to, because that, that was a horrible one where the, yeah. I mean, the houses were, you know, bad electricity, everything. They were, I mean, the apartments, and it was awful, and we found it's an investigation into it. I was still with the housing partnership mm -hmm. then. They were in North Carolina. They didn't care what was built here. They built it. They got their money. They got their tax credits. They were gone. Got the only developer that I've known to be successful with these here in the last 10 years is a local company. Um, <coughs> but these oh, new companies are competition. It's something to be aware of. Yeah. Because they are. I don't know if anybody thinks about that down. because, you know, okay, we're glad to have the housing, but how invested are they in this community? Are yeah. they going to stay here? Or do they live here? You know. Oh, and that one company, I mean, they're headquartered here, but they have, well, this was six, seven years ago, they had 51 different projects around the state that they managed. It's at least still in Georgia. Yeah, they were all in Georgia, yeah. and a few of them Georgia, were here. Georgia can't was, afford to lose a nickel. <laughs> but, you know, they, you know, it's they're a good, very, very good, experienced company, and they do quality development of these. Okay. And I think they're, um, I believe it's investors management company. Yeah, group. Investors Management Group has changed. You know, it used to be down on almost to Sam's as well, right? Uh, At um, Ambling. Ambling. Are they gone? They've changed. They're building dorms now? Um, there's one branch of them that is actually looking at doing this kind and of They project. built several nice sets here. Yeah. They did. And they're still in the business for it. Okay. But they're not, they're not applying to do any locally now? Uh, they're actually looking around. Good. At least they, they did local, man, uh, as they did local stuff and they did local stuff. And they should be just really downsized. Yeah. yeah. You know, they they fragmented. Mm -hmm. The question came up of uh, what, what are mixed income developments. And that's just when uh, some affordable housing is uh, mixed in together with the more upscale housing, as it were. So it um, allows for a uh, diversity in the mix of people of different income levels. To, um, in the same development. Well, and some of these tax credit projects are just that. They're are not all just low income. Uh -huh. There's some, I can think of one in particular, um, where they have 
some market rate apartments. Right. Yeah. So it's more like a, just a mixed community. Yeah. But the issue with that has come up in Atlanta. They will knock down, you know, whole areas of low-income housing, and what gets built back only has a third of them are low-income housing. Right. So all the people who are living there, where do Displaced. they go? You know, right. because they can't even come back into that situation because they have come along for afford to live where they used to live because right. now it's mixed income. We and haven't. They don't, they don't deal that. with that well. <laughs> it's it's not a bad idea. It is an opportunity for us, but we haven't. We haven't seen that regulated here, or an example like that here yet. Well, we haven't torn down an area to build right. something. Right. That's right. the other. We're building on stuff that's just land. But in Atlanta, you know, they took down they took down all the low income housing, and now Georgia Tech has dorms. Mm -hmm. so. The Olympics did that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly that was the Olympics. And we've seen the opposite of that, in that I think in the planning and zoning meeting, I heard them talk about Gateway One and Two project in Ahira. Mm -hmm. And when you have these low income tax credits come in, they specifically have a guideline to go by as far as these different levels of income. Right. Uh, well, we've seen it flip where there's a standard, mm -hmm. and that standard's not being watched. Mm -hmm. So they're so people that have higher income? Lower, mm -hmm. higher. Whatever that standard was, it changes it more mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, Section 8, let's say Section uh -huh. 8, where you have the developer come in and stand before a council and say, well, it's going to be this specifically. You know, how many Section 8 in there? It's not mixed, it's yeah. not any of that. Who watches that? Mm -hmm. And that changes. So that changes the community. Mm -hmm. Well, DCA keeps up with that, and they did an amazing thing this year. Instead of saying you had to wait until your county came up and keep looking at the website to see when your county was open. They did a statewide open day, open thing for a week. You could call in, you could apply, and everybody who applied was subject to a lottery. And then they posted the numbers of the people, their registration number, and that's who got Section 8 housing. And it was in some counties and not in other counties. And it was the, it was the most fair way I've ever seen it done, instead of just saying, because it used to be you could live in Eccles County and apply for one in, in Lowndes, and they quit doing that. And then they did this across the state thing so that it wasn't just one day, you had to wait six hours on the phone to hope to register. You could do it online on your, at your convenience, and then it was announced all at the same time to everybody. So I'm hoping they're at least looking at some more fair ways to do it, because it's hard, and there are people that fuss about Section 8. They'll say, well, people get in that and never get out of it. You know? But there is a program to help them get out. Uh, the, family, the family program that helps them save money so that they can get their own home is also out there. And hey ma'am, just to your point, Help me understand, so is the oversight, are, are you disappointed with the fact that they don't have more low-income individuals in the houses, or they actually need, or, or, I mean, I help me understand, like, well, where, I where's my the... Answer, I didn't get my answer to the first question. How do you determine that there is a need, uh -huh. first of all? Okay. Because now we have a developer that's developed all over this county, and I don't see the first requirement, the first need for it where it's asked for. It's just like build it and they will come. And it changes the neighborhood, changes the configuration way faster than what we want it to be mm -hmm. or what the plan is. So oversight, and then after it's built, how do you oversee it? Mm -hmm. There's supposed to be certain guidelines as far as people meeting the requirements. You mean meeting like the low income requirements? Economic requirements, yeah. Um, if that's not happening, you need to report that to the Department yeah. of Community Affairs. Is that's what I'm asking. There is, yeah. the, there is yeah. absolutely a reporting number for there. the Department of Community Affairs. Right. Mm -hmm. The only way they know where there's a need is by census. Mm -hmm. You know, they look at the census and they have to they have to say what census tract has enough people that have X, Y, and Z because they're presuming that people from that census tract will move in there. Not that people will move from across another county or whatever. It all is done by census tract. When you see grants done, I've written grants in the past, you have to show a certain census tract to the CDBG, Community Development Block Grant. What areas are you covering? And then you can say, here's what the census says, here's what the income is, here's what the jobs are in this community. Census runs all of that. Well, this is what I, I, I would hope that these developers or these management companies or whatever are doing, market studies. But it doesn't. Oh, um, that is funny. Isn't it? It's not. It's not so much market. It's census. Well, I mean, trying to establish what the community needs. Yeah. Right. They're saying we need to build three of these within the next five years. Mm -hmm. 
Why is that? There's got to be some information backing that up. And that's part of what they have to submit as part of their package to DCA. This is the tax yeah. credit projects. Mm -hmm. They have to show the market. They can't just write and say we want to do it because we want to build it. Yeah, because I'm, I'm remembering your last. Well, that's, that's part of the correct. review criteria for the state. What's talking about? And then when they're approved, they're locked into it for 15 years and they're monitored each year. And they have to produce the list of the tenants and the criteria that they met. Mm -hmm. And if you think they're not monitored, I would say call John Bassett because he's not there anymore. But <laughs> there is somebody in DCA yeah, who's in charge of that. Before we go. <laughs> yeah. I think if John Bassett's gone, but well, there's somebody in John Bassett's place who would, who yeah. would be the first Either way, it doesn't matter which side of it I was on. Yeah. The question is still the same. Well, it's, it's important to ask yeah. because they may not be getting the monitoring they need. The thing is, somebody did not do what someone was supposed to do. Yep, and that happens. Follow. Oh. And when you have those situations, whether it's low income or whatever, it ruins a community. Okay. And we're, we're, we're special. <laughs> we're in Hanar, we're special. I have a comment you know, that's to where that I'm, too. I'm, sure. That's where my heart is. Yes. You know, Lowndes County, yes. But. The state is the regulating authority on an issue of who is, who is checking, who are they reporting to. They're also the funnel for their tax credit. Exactly. So they have the carrot and the stick. Yeah. They can, they can lose some of their tax credit if they don't behave. That's a good answer. But they also have a checklist, and everything's not on that checklist that I'm concerned with. Yeah. Sure. You need to talk to DCA, and they, yeah. have, they have meetings you can go to. Mm -hmm. yeah. When she's talking about where they came and spoke to the council, I was there when they came for the phase two. Not one person in that audience was from the Hayhar community. They were from Lake Park, Lakeland, all of them coming in there and, and wanting to get into those. And so, like she said, they're not checking to see who in Hayhara needs this. Mm. Is this needed in Hayhara or anywhere else, you know? Well, they had to show that to the state. They had to show the census, but they can't go like, you know, here's a list of people because the census doesn't show that. Yeah, well, people moved they had to from show a need in Hayhara. People yeah. moved because I was doing the greeting at that time, and I would go and greet yeah, people as they moved yeah. in. Yeah, people were moving from out of state and everywhere. Yeah. Well, if you if you qualify, you can move there. They only have to show the need as the number of people who mm -hmm. are that income. You know, right? They can't discriminate. Say only Hayhara existing Hayhara. Yeah, they started discriminating. Your people would be screaming because they were not letting them in because they were eligible. Right, and the <laughs> phase two was different than the phase one. The phase two was here or marketed toward retirees. Mm -hmm. Okay, but only yeah. one person had to be. They call the the yeah. They could have a whole family in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Um, Still on housing. Still on yeah. housing opportunities. Page 14. Any other thoughts on the housing opportunities? I mean, just like Jason had said, I mean, some of these can be sort of merged together a little bit. Yeah, yeah. indeed. I, I don't know what to really to say about this, but is everyone aware of any phenomenon of involuntary renters that's quite widespread? You mean you have a vacant rental house and all of a sudden you have people living in? You mean squatters? <laughs> no, I mean, let's mean take voluntary Let's take, for example, the subdivision that's grandfathered in next to me. Um, it's a lot of the houses are owned by people from Moody. Mm -hmm. Then they get transferred. They want to sell the house. There aren't that many buyers, so then they have to rent the house. Mm -hmm. This isn't just a phenomenon for Moody owners. It's all across the county. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what to say about this, but it's definitely a phenomenon which might be some sort of issue or opportunity. There's planners here, they probably know better than I what those might be. We had overabundance of rental properties, but you're saying the problem is, is that they're not able to sell their house by the time they need to literally make a job change. Mm -hmm. So they're stuck short-term renting the house. Mm -hmm. And that's not unique to Lance County. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Everywhere. It's not clear it's really short-term. Mm -hmm. You think it's not legal or you just don't like it? I didn't say anything about it not being legal. Well, you said involuntary, is that? Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't what they wanted to do. That's right. the meaning of involuntary. Right. Because right. they want to sell it. Right. They're just not able to get the rent. There could be a variety of reasons why they're not able to sell it. It could be just that they're not getting the price they want. Right. It could be as simple as that. 
where they you know, have a huge mortgage on it and they're upside down on it. Mm -hmm. and they can't walk away. It does lead to the phenomenon that there's apparently a, 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 perhaps even an overstock of housing, which leads to the question of why do we need to build a lot more houses? Mm -hmm. That's what the end of that question. Mm -hmm. Well, it being, being a legitimate question, but business and the business cycle dictates this now because uh, before we had people were getting ungodly amounts of money on their homes. So they were going back and refinancing their homes. They were getting this money and they were walking away from the loan. Uh, there were other individuals who got greedy and did not sell because they thought it was going to continue to go up. Mm -hmm. And the market came down. Mm -hmm. And so they lost money. They walked away from their home. So here are these homes sitting in the neighborhood. And then you get the broken window effect, right? Mm -hmm. And down in Miami, where we were living, the people uh, were doing two things. One, the druggies were moving into the house because it was empty and living free. Number two, uh, they were going and stealing the copper from the air conditioning units and selling it. So you had a major problem. And if we don't, if we're not diligent watching who is in the neighborhood, these empty houses that are in the neighborhood, we have to have some kind of way of watching this. Because if we do not, mm -hmm. the neighborhood will go down so fast that you don't even know. And you say, these people were there. People are moving, but we're always moving and coming back and shifting. Uh, people are trying to make a quick buck. They're telling you to flip a house. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I don't know. We used to have neighborhood watch. Do we not have that anymore? Mm -hmm. Some neighborhood. Some 